Windows that can't open. <laughs> Air purifiers. <laughs> Microwaves and little fridges. <laughs> Did you have them for quarantine? I don't know about that. <laughs> <Jim Jeffries. laughs> I don't know. Good? <laughs> it was uh, fantastic. I don't know if the timing was good, that but might it, be our it, best it'll, one, it'll yeah. work. Yeah, it's, it's a home run. <laughs> I like that People a lot. People will like it. <laughs> <laughs> People will enjoy it. All right. Where are you at, Jim? I'll, I'll show you around quarantine. <laughs> yeah, you're, Jim is in Sydney quarantining. All right, here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How do I reverse that camera? There we go. <laughs> No, you have, you have, you have you. Yeah, yeah. Well, now you haven't oh, that's reversed it yet. Oh, there, <laughs> there, there we go. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's a motorway I can look at all day. <laughs> it's, it's an exercise your, bike. Your fingers well, in front of the camera. Your, yeah, your fingers yeah. in front of the camera. Oh, yeah. 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 It's an exercise bike. You... Got a bit more of a curtain here. Oh wow! Look Why do you have so many trinkets in the window? Friend Mick Malloy, shirtless. <laughs> 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 Have you used the exercise bike yet? I have used it. I've tripped over it more than I've used it. <laughs> Couple of plants, some Australian telly, air humidifier. It's quite good. We get a twelve rating, but well, that might be twelve percent left. I don't know. I won't <laughs> show my wife because she doesn't want to get shown on camera because it's early in the morning. But we have the other bit. Yeah, that's a nice hotel. There's a, there's a tip of my wife's head, <laughs> and then, and then that's that's. We're not allowed to leave this room for two weeks. You're almost done, right? There's some plants in there. Yeah, we bought plants. Yeah, that's nice. We bought we bought plants <laughs> for clean air. Extra we oxygen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for oxygen. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I'll get back into bed. <laughs> Jim's doing this episode from bed. Yes, if you're just What's a I, video listener. What's the other options? I'm going to. You all wish you're in bed as well. I do. Do it from the exercise bike. I can do it from the exercise bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there Get we go. Wow. Right, yeah. yeah. There we go. Let's see if we can. I'm feeling stronger today. I was weaker <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> He's on the exercise bike there. For those of you listening at home, it's it's worth YouTube. Yes, no, it's definitely. Not, just that. <laughs> Jack, you got something for us? Uh, we're going to do Comet World today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jim has just woken up for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's 8 a.m. in Australia. 8 a.m. Tuesday, and we're doing this, whatever, 3 p.m. No Monday. theme song today because Jim will not be able to hear it. Correct. Um, yeah. So we'll start off with uh, 88 liters. Yeah. People, a lot of people were shocked, and some people are going, I don't think it's that much. <laughs> Why are you, what are you setting on fire? Why are you lighting a match? Yeah, what's, what's Did you on? shit your pants on the bike? Oh, you're lighting a candle. Oh, okay. okay. This is how I keep things smelling good. <laughs> <laughs> you he didn't light, blow it out. Blow the, blow the, blow the match <laughs> I out. I thought right. he threw the match after he thought he blew it. I was like, <laughs> your room will been, be on fire. It's one way to leave. That was a visual comedy. That's how you get out of quarantine. Burn the place. <laughs> 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 All right, we're in the comment world now. So what did you say? The... There's 88 a comment. liters a week. And people were a, commenting on the 88 liters. There's a few liters. people who have gone, wait, that's like two bottles a week. That doesn't seem that bad to me. What? Two, yeah, bottles. two bottles of whiskey a week? That's, that's, that is a lot, right? That's a lot of yeah, whiskey. Yeah, that's a lot of yeah. whiskey. That's, that's, a, that's a lot. And that's just the average. That wasn't the heavy drinkers. Yeah. That was just the 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 the, 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 just the social drinkers. Yeah, that doing was the, the casuals. <laughs> yeah, doctors were okay there with was, that. And also, if you go, that's two bottles. That's not that bad. A week, you got a drinking problem. You're an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing the bike. Yeah, he's really doing it. Yeah. Or you're just walking back and forth. One of the two. Right. <laughs> oh, those fucking pajama pants. Did you get those pajamas from Dr. Seuss? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Like you borrowed those from your son. What other comments are there, Um, Someone commented on the credit score episode. Yeah. They said, my credit score went from like 750 to 798 since I watched this. I have two cards focused on keeping that balance uh, to zero and oh, chipping away at the second one. They followed her advice. They followed the Hell advice. Yeah. Okay. And then the, What's her name? the, the Tiffany. 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 Tiffany Alice. Alice, thank you. They got in one last Dave Grohl joke. They said he looks like Dave Grohl if Dave Grohl was a fry cook. 
one last one? You think that's it? No. Well, just... If Dave Cole was a fry, I don't get that one. I don't either. <laughs> I guess it, picture him frying something, and that's me, I guess. Huh. But mm. a, fry, Needs work. a fry, a fry cooks renowned for, for being virgins or something. What's what's the thing? Like why? What? I'm not sure. What do you, what's the, like if you're a fry cook right now, you're at work hearing this podcast, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get the I fry cook either. I, I try to have an honest living. I work hard, and this is the shit I get. <laughs> <laughs> I get compared to Jack. Fuck me. Um, this person confirmed one of your points. They go, as a former bouncer, I totally agree the British and Irish are uniquely fond of a bar fight. The only two nationalities that if you're going to have a fight, just throw a punch. No need to have a chat first. It's those two. Americans will talk about having to fight for ages before anything happens. So, Yeah. That's how all the wars have started. <laughs> I if any, if anybody... I, I guess... I, I, what's that? Oh, yeah. If I thought that was a lot of exercise. I must have been on that bike for minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys have figured it out, but we didn't really explain that Jim is in quarantine. Yeah, so yeah. This is the first episode we've done when you're not here. You're zoomed in. So if you haven't figured it out, Jim's in quarantine Australia. I think, I think, this, I think, this, I think this episode comes out after I get back from Australia. So the, day the tour went great. Yeah, the yeah. tour went really good. Uh, there's, 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 there's new shows on sale for the American tour. There's an extra one out in New York and... I assume somewhere else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, everything's gone good. <laughs> <laughs> because because, because this podcast is so far in the future, I'm just going to go, whatever crime they're accusing me of, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Let's cover my bases. Yeah. Um, someone said, and then, of course, I, I don't look up the validity the validity to these comments, but they said the X in Dallas where JFK was shot, they said the city doesn't paint it. Nobody really knows who paints it. Hmm. Cool oh, if it's, it's true. Funny, in the middle of the road, you could pick up <laughs> on it pretty quick. You know what I mean? It's not like a mystery on top of a fucking mountain. It's on, it's on an expressway. Like, <laughs> Late at you, night. You, you just, yeah, just leave a camera on it. You'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, shout out to Kelly and her box of extra toasty Cheez-Its. That's mm. what's up. I'm not sure what episode mm. they're commenting on, but Great. weird. they're not here now. I think so. that's from the unsolicited. <laughs> I ate those on our other podcasts, so maybe they're confused about which podcast they're watching. And so someone said, I've officially set Kelly going, yeah, 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 um, from, fuck, I didn't take a screenshot of what episode it's from. But I think it's from the gun episode, and I have the... Poll right here. Wait, what? What's going you, on? You you go. You said you're not yeah, explaining yeah. this very well. Say it again. Oh, sorry. Uh, as the ringtone for their phone, they, oh. you, Kelly's yeah 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 as their ringtone now, oh. and it sounds like this. Oh, this poll, this poll is for a second. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean like that. <laughs> uh, everyone's in there though. Yeah. So, so, as everyone's yeah 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 is, like is his one. new ringtone. That's great. Mm, wow. Bye, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> we lost Jim. You know, there was a yeah. comment that said they always someone else skips the first twenty minutes of this episode. I guess he is too. <laughs> He's like, I love not. Being How would they know to send this in the comment world then if they skip the first twenty minutes? They just Ooh, know it's going to hurt me. Liar. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, also, while we're at this, I'm filming a documentary. <laughs> uh, you know about this, but I'm filming yeah. a documentary <laughs> about my travels. And so I have to document a small part of my day. So this is me talking to you to talk to the documentary to talk about different things. This is like a Russian doll of information right now. Wait, are we supposed to pretend like we don't know the documentary is being filmed? No, you can very clearly see that I'm filming. No, yeah, you well, know that the documentary is being I know, filmed. Yeah. I, I don't know whether I'm meant to tell the world what it's being filmed for because you guys can tell people a thing. And it doesn't matter if you're, if you're watching the documentary right now. Yeah, then you already know what it's about, so you'll be fine. <laughs> I don't think this will make the cut. This <laughs> I don't think this is making the cut. But, oh, hey, Jim, hey. we're doing the podcast. Oh, wow. oh, I'm on a documentary. So good to see you. Wow, what is hold this on. for? Hold on, hold on, stop. He, wa he wasn't I'm recording. I'm going to press record. <laughs> okay. Don't worry, so we'll just pull this one. I, I do a podcast, and I'm in quarantine right now, and I'm still working from quarantine. Hardest man in, working man in show business, I reckon. That was James Brown, mm -hmm. then me. 
I don't think James Brown was the hardest working person in show business. It seemed like he was always strung out in drugs and causing mischief. So Ryan Seacrest, I, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest is the hardest working yeah. man. Or Wayne Brady. He's everywhere too. Yeah, yeah Wayne Brady's hard working. I'm I'm the, the laziest successful man in show business. <laughs> <laughs> Good title. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, that's a new All special. Right, Good night, Australia. Right. All right. So there you go. We got the documentary. What I do, what I do is that I meant to film something every day for the documentary while I'm in quarantine, and uh, and uh, Lisa Vanderpump calls us and we record those conversations. Yeah. So it looks like, yeah, those will uh, make I, the cut. Those will make the cut. <laughs> I think they, uh, I think they will. <laughs> she rings up and she goes, "How are you doing, darling? You're having a good time in quarantine?" And I go, "Ah, oh, I'm having a terrible time, Lisa." And I moan to she talks me through it. She puts her dog up to the camera and I go, oh, that'll cheer me up. That's that's basically how we work. <laughs> All right. Lisa Vanderpump's really like your fairy godmother now. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful woman, Lisa Vanderpump. I won't hear a bad word said against her. Wonderful lady. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got, Jack? I'm back to cycling. <laughs> <laughs> Someone commented in the gun control episode. They go, funnily enough, I watch a bit of NBC6 News in the morning, dot, 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 gun violence. Dot, 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 gun violence, gun violence, bat attack, what? No, it was not an attack of a flying bat, but a dude standing in front of a fire engine smashing the windscreen with a baseball bat. What an effed up crazy country. Mm. <laughs> True. Mm, yeah. There were he's, definitely he's some, right. com there were some comments staying from people. A, oh, sorry, go ahead. So staying in Australia, you forget how mundane the rest of the world's news is. And it's just the Australian news is just... Oh, is, is, woman falls over. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa, is she okay? Like, like the big thing at the moment is someone's invented a tiny capsule that you you eat and then it expands in your stomach so you lose like 20 kilos, right? right? I don't know whether I'm watching an infomercial or an actual miracle thing, but that's the big news story in Australia right now, expanding capsules. You, you got that news in America? <laughs> no, no, but I remember those yeah, things. Yeah, I remember those behind. Too. I remember yeah. those things from before, but the problem is how does it unexpand so it goes to your intestines? Yeah, it's uh, look, I, I, look, I, I'm not saying it's going to fix the world. It requires, <laughs> it requires no anesthesia, sedation, or endoscopy. So, look, I'm not making it up. No. It's here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there you go. Look, there you go. So it goes down like that. Yeah. It's into your stomach. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I don't want to give the whole storyline away. Uh, okay. But I'm just saying the news in Australia is very basic. Is that bike from 1984, by the way? It doesn't look like a very... It's new. one of the ones that the pregnant can sit on. Oh, so yeah. you sit back. You put your hands by your side, you do that. It'd be good for a guy that was paralyzed from the waist up. <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah. No, but you, yeah. that, that you could be. That from the waist be. up only? Only your legs work? I don't know. I bet, yeah. I bet, I bet, I bet there's be people weird. who's just... <laughs> it's walking around like all frozen on top. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, I don't wonder. I don't huh. think that's a thing. Okay, like I'm going to look it up later. I don't, I don't think it's a because thing. The, I've seen a bloke who has no arms in the pub who does the thing where he picks up his beer with his two feet and sits in the corner and all that type of stuff. And I'm like, that guy really wants a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anything else, Jack? Yeah, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Most of the comments have been horrible because they're just people complaining about guns in the comments. Um, yeah, but, a lot of people thought a blonde woman wouldn't know about gun laws. Yeah, they're like, she's not anything. <laughs> no, nah, a lot of upset people. Sorry. Uh, get over it. Um, <laughs> but a question that come up that I've seen people debate online before, they go, does the bow tie go at the top or the bottom of the giraffe's neck? So if a giraffe has to get dressed up, where do you put the tie? Top. You put it at the. You put it at the. You put it just about two inches underneath his chin, like we do. You know what I mean. You don't want it like right up up, up oh, his chin. But you put it up the top. You don't put it down the bottom. The shirt. The shirt should cover a bit more of his neck. Yeah. It's yeah. Like a, a turtleneck. I don't know. I think it would go at the the base where You'd be neck wrong. meets the bottom. Okay. Yeah, it should be called a draft neck. Those sweaters. <laughs> I don't know why they're called turtlenecks. Either way you do it, it's animal cruelty. <laughs> like the animal, the animal hasn't requested a bow tie at any stage. This is all for our pleasure. So I, it, I think it, a, you, a bow tie up top makes sense. What about just like a normal like necktie? Yeah, still. I feel, that up oh, the top looks top. weird to me. 
I, mean, I can't picture that. No, you that. need a very long necktie. And, and what if you wore them low like Trump does? You know how Trump wears his neckties over his dick? He goes real low on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there wouldn't be enough fabric. No, definitely not. I like that Jack thinks there's some way that a giraffe could wear a necktie that would look normal. Yeah, I know. He's like, it would just look weird like that. (laughs) That's right. Well, that's why we're talking about it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, like, like Jack's like, how am I going to sneak this giraffe into the prom if you don't wear his necktie properly? (laughs) They're not going to buy their my girlfriend. (laughs) She lives in Africa. (laughs) And she just flew in. Is that it for Common That's World? That's it for Common World. Wow, that person yes. went up to wait 20 minutes this week. That's good for them. Yeah, it's good. Only 18. All right, <laughs> Should we do some ads? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get to the ads, obviously uh, on the back of the huge success of the Australian tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you haven't said that yet. In this uh, episode. No, in the beginning of the good. podcast, we would have talked about it. No. Oh. No, well, no. You no, said, you said to- it went great. Yeah, no, well, I'm going to keep went, up with this story. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. More, the best reviews I've ever had in Australia. Not a single negative review. <laughs> okay. It was, a, it was a good tour, I tell you. You can't do better than that. Not a single one star. They were all positive. <laughs> in the Moist Tour, the Moist Tour, Jim Jeffries, the Moist Tour, new shows. Uh, the U.S. Tour, you got some In dates. the U.S. Oh, yeah. they'll never get canceled, the U.S. Tour. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, the shows are in Florida. Yeah, okay, so... <laughs> So I just uh, I added a new uh, show to the Beacon Theatre, which will be right around now. I think we're coming. We added an extra night. No, it's it's in September. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when's this podcast coming out? Tomorrow. Like tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> did, you, did you think we were pre-recording September? Why don't you right see now? me at the Beacon Theatre? <laughs> I've added an extra show to the Beacon Theatre in September. Uh, Los Angeles, I have added an extra show to the Ace Theatre. That's Sunday, November the 7th. I think you get that at Access Tickets. Minneapolis, Sunday, November 20th. Extra Saturday. show added. Saturday, Saturday, November 20th. Extra show added in Minneapolis. Extra show in December if you're looking for something to do around Christmas in San Francisco, Sunday, December 18th. 19. <laughs> well, it's very small print, 19. <laughs> December 19th. Look, well. Go under the fucking thing. If you're in San Francisco, figure it out, people. Where can they find the dates? Jim Jeffries. Uh, JimJeffries.com. Yeah, maybe they should just go there. Go to JimJeffries.com yeah, but then, for all your Jim Jeffries needs. So it's New York. I talked Jack into uh, coming to Chicago for your Chicago show. Oh, We're both going to be there. my kind of town. So it's New York, Minneapolis, San Francisco, and L.A. Extra yeah, shows. Extra shows. All those yeah. other shows, the original shows are sold out. Wow. Going great Woo. guns. Now, there are some shows on the tour that aren't selling as good. <laughs> Fort Myers, don't worry, you'll be able to get tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some ads. <laughs> Green Chef. Green Chef's expert chefs design flavorful recipes that go way beyond ordinary for a diverse array of meal plans and plenty of options to choose from each week. Everything is hand picked, featuring organic vegetables. And high-quality proteins delivered to your door, pre-measured. That means they measure it before you, before you get it pre. Look it up. And mostly prepared in insulated packaging. Don't know what that means. I do that. <laughs> My favourite is the honey citrus grilled chicken or the orange miso chicken. I like chicken. And I like it grilled and I also like it miso. Go to greenchef.com slash I don't know 100 and use the code I don't know 100 to get 100. What? This can't be right. What? what? $100 off. That's what it says. That's our biggest discount of anything we've got, I think. So obviously they're going to kill you on the shipping. What? And free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash I don't know 100 and use the code I don't know 100 to get $100 off, including free shipping. The number one meal kit for eating well. Summer's here. Summer's here. It's bright outside. It's natural lighting. And living ain't easy. If you've got swamp ass, that swampy, pooey ass. <laughs> How you stay on top of sweaty bottom? Oh, glad you asked. Try a refreshing spray from Hello Tushy Bidet. Keep your sweaty crack clean all summer long with the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 modern bidet attachment. It's a stylish, eco-friendly, refreshing little shower for your bot butt. 
Hello Tushy, 3.0 cleans soggy butts like a champ, but it doesn't stop there. You think that would be enough for it? Like if I cleaned an asshole better than anyone else, I'd think myself, I'll probably rest on me laurels. But not Hello Tushy 3.0, it also cleans itself. See, if I was an ass cleaner, I'd do a tremendous job. There'd just be shit over my hands all day because I'd never fix it. But not the Hello Tushy 3.0. No one wants to work up a sweat in 100 degrees heat, and that's why Hello Tushy Bidets attaches to your existing toilet. So you don't have to install it, there's no hard work. With no electricity, extra plumbing needed, and Hello Tushy cuts toilet paper. That's pretty good, it cuts toilet Oh, oh, uh, usage to 80%. Doesn't physically <laughs> cut toilet paper, but you will use less toilet paper. So it pays for itself in just a few months. How can you afford not to get one? Because you can. Plus, Hello Tushy got your ass covered with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a two 12-month warranty. I don't know if they want you to send it back or you just write them a letter. Either way, it doesn't sound like a win for anyone there, so just keep it. I've lost the bottom of me advert here. Okay, I've got to go down a bit. Hold on. Hold on, just keep filming, Jack. This is good stuff. Uh, already got a Hello Tushy? Uh, treat your ass to the new 3.0 model. If you're new to the, the revelation, the revolution, eh? join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every flush. Defeat Swamp Us. Go to hellotushy.com slash gym and get 10% off plus free, plus free shipping. It does say it. Look, I, I assume it's a misprint, but they say it. So you're getting free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash gym for 10% off. Hellotushy.com slash gym. All right. Uh, time to introduce our guest for today. Please welcome to the show, Forrest Shaw. Uh, hey! hey. 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 He's a big fan oh. of the podcast. Oh, 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 the topic today, the topic today is where are the bodies hidden? <laughs> uh, no. Correct, correct. I think you probably yeah, know what the topic is, right? when there's a bloke that's like, I used to live in Florida, now I relocated. <laughs> are you done with the impression of me, Kelly? That was oh, all? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to and do And Jack, Jack is Kelly. Yeah, he's getting high, he's a waving of... a dildo around. <laughs> <laughs> You're just throwing stuff. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I see how you feel. Your dog's about, about to chew on that dildo. <laughs> What's that? Uh, the dog's about to chew on the dildo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, loves hold it. On, hold on, let me get the... <laughs> Dang it, Kelly. Uh, Arnie was just peacefully taking a nap and you threw a dildo <laughs> at him. I would never do that to him. All right, so you're still, it's still judging a book by... Well, you go, huh, Kelly. It's your, uh, your yeah, show. Yeah, so know, why don't you ask him a few questions, see what he's here to talk about. Uh, okay. <laughs> Have I written any okay. books? Does <laughs> no. your specialty subject involve humanity? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow, he got it on the first try. Great job. Yeah. There's um, a first time for everything. I just want to say um, that I, uh, well, you can introduce me. Okay, Forrest Shaw is a former marine biologist. For seven years, he was a manager of the Miami Dade County Manatee Protection Program. He is also the co host of the I Don't Know About That podcast with Jim Jeffries, Save the Manatees.org. Oh, I was, I was going to say Save the Manatees. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. yeah, well. Um, so I'm not saying I'm the best expert on manatees, but I think I remember enough about manatees and I won't, I won't get anything wrong. I know that. So I can't wait for people to correct me. <laughs> I did this for many years and I think I can answer all these questions that we got. And, but I will say, if you do want to support manatees, save the manatee.org is a website to go to. Uh, they're based in Florida and they have a bunch of different things that you can donate on there. You can adopt a manatee. Ooh. Comes live in your house oh, with you. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Swimming pool. Yeah. Well, as you guys may know, Jim is going to try to tell us everything he thinks he knows about manatees. I will prod him along with questions, and um, we will be scoring him. So, for us, you'll be grading him on accuracy. Yeah. I will grade him on, or Jack will grade him on confidence. That's right. I will grade him on etc. Um, if you get a zero through ten, you are a blubbery bitch. 
<laughs> 11 through 20, Hugh Manatee. Mm-hmm. 21 through 30, Hugh Jack Manatee. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> What? What's the hue? What's the hue? Is that they like called? Okay, I'm probably already like humanity. Like humanity. Like humanity. Oh, Hugh humanity. Manatee. Yeah. Uh, then Jack. Yeah. Hugh, Hugh Jack Manatee. Hugh okay. Jack All right, manatee. that went well. Great. <laughs> All right, let's start. What is a manatee? It's an American dolphin. <laughs> That's the only difference is when you get the lovely dolphins in other countries, they're slim and they're sleek and they can swim. And the diet over here is terrible. It's an American dolphin. Okay. No, they're like a fat, they're like a fat fuck, they're the fat fuck of the sea. Mm. They're, they're, um, <laughs> they're like, they look like they should be in smaller bodies, but they're over eight. They, and they sort of, they'd be, re, they'd be related to, to walruses and seals would be what they're close. They're, it, it's like if a walrus fucked the seal <laughs> and then there was like, then there was like some Marvel comic sort of radioactive thing that happened that bang manatee. <laughs> okay. All right. Is a manatee a reptile, mammal, amphibian, or a fish? Uh it's a mammal. I believe they have blowholes in them. Okay. What is uh, it? I don't I don't think it's amphibian. I've never seen one walking around the high street. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never I've never seen one in a Miami nightclub like, hey, they don't let us people in. You know, <laughs> maybe, you know. How many other I'm amphibians gonna... do you see at Miami nightclubs? <laughs> I've, I've got a chat with a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reptile. What is another name for a manatee? Uh, what's another name for a manatee? Aside uh, from the fat fuck of the sea. Fat <laughs> fuck of the sea? <laughs> American dolphin. <laughs> fat fuck of the sea is a good name, though. <laughs> Uh, many, uh, 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 super porpoise. Super porpoise. Okay. Mm-hmm. How many types of manatees are there or species? Um, uh, 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 seven. Okay. Are dugongs manatees? Sure. <laughs> Did, wait, do you know what a dugong is? No, it's a manatee. Shut up, <laughs> Boris. Give it to you in a second. <laughs> They're in Australia. Every other guest has been able to follow the fucking formula. Okay, sorry, sorry. sorry. (laughs) Is Jay Leno in it? (laughs) What is a a Stellar's sea cow? Uh, Stellar's sea cow. That's that's the, um, that's uh, uh, that's where manatees get their hamburgers. Mm, Okay. Mm. So it's a shop. Uh, All right. How large is a full-grown Florida manatee? What in weight or length? On both. On both. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Give me what you know. Um, uh, they grow to be nine feet long, and they weigh uh, nine hundred pounds. All right. How large is a baby manatee when they are born? Ah, uh, see, this could be a trick. It could be a fucking tadpole. Um. I want to say that they shoot, they get out. I'd say uh, the size of, uh, it'll be three feet long, 90 pounds. Okay. No, 150 pounds. All right. Um, how long can they hold their breath for? Uh, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be something like 20 minutes or something like that. There'd be like a 20 minutes. Okay. They have to. They have a hole. That's why I'm saying they're a mammal that, that they've got a breathing hole. Okay. So they have to come out. So, so I know that dolphins can sleep with half their brain can be asleep, and then the other half of their brain can be asleep because they have to remember to swim up to to give air and all that type of stuff. So, so it'll be it'll be a while. All right. Twenty minutes. What's unique about their teeth? Uh, they're they're made out of skittles. Mm, no, I didn't think you were going to no, get that one. Chase the rainbow. Starburst. starburst, okay. Made out of Starburst. Um, what do they eat and how do they eat? Um, well, up until about 10 years ago, um, their, their main diet was forest cum. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's keeping it alive. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the only thing that wouldn't rot the Starburst. Um, <laughs> Uh, what, what what do they eat? They eat plankton. They eat plankton, and they eat other fish. They eat, they eat uh, they eat smaller fish than them. 
Okay. A manatee has prehensile lips. What does that mean? Um, uh, it's, it's like the Kardashians, like in season five, <laughs> the two younger ones, Riley and all that, before they came, became hot, they had the, the lips. So hensile means fillers. It was pre-fillers? Pre-fillers, okay. yeah. Pre-fillers. All right. Is a manatee a ruminant or a non-ruminant? I've heard for I say this word, so I'm going to say that it is a ruminant. The rumor is that it's a ruminant. <laughs> Do you have any idea what that means? I don't need to be fucking pot pride for questions from you. Just stick to the, bloody, <laughs> just, just stick to the fucking manatees. Yeah. If I you already got it wrong. Second, so you you know what that is. I got, it, I got it right or I didn't. <laughs> no, you got it wrong. The answer is no, I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, when do they reach sexual maturity? Um, oh, I guess they must live for a while. Um, I, I, I assume it's the same as the humans. So 45, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is their gestation period? Uh, how long are they preggers for? Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm going to say four months. Four months. All right. We'll get two or three more in here. Um, can they communicate with each other? If so, how? Uh, yes, they'd have uh, they'd have a bit of sonar on them. Okay. Um, are th- <laughs> yeah, and and through winking gestures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what are the threats to the Florida manatee? Um. Uh, well, it'd be. I, 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 okay, so it wouldn't be raising sea level. That's just giving them more hope. Um, <laughs> they like climate change. <laughs> yeah, this is giving them more space. Uh, they're, they're, I, I would say rednecks would be their number one threat. <laughs> rednecks, number one. It's, uh, All right. It's pretty good. How, yeah. ma- how, ma- <laughs> <laughs> how many are left? Uh, I've seen two, and that was in a space of that much water, and there was more water around. <laughs> I want, I want to say, I want to say they're endangered, but not too endangered. So I'm going to go. There's still a million of them. All right. Yeah. All right, Forrest. How did he do on a scale of zero to ten on accuracy? I was hoping to give him a zero because no one's ever given him a zero, but he got a couple sort of right by accident. But those, I'm gonna give him a one. One, yeah. All right, Jack. How yeah. do you do on confidence? Man, Chitty. <laughs> <laughs> one. I'm gonna give him a five in confidence because of that meltdown at one point where he goes, "I need, I don't need to hide from you." Okay. Mm, All okay. right. So we got a six. <laughs> You're new to this, Jack. So. I give him a. Uh, I'm gonna give him a three on etc. for his pajama pants. That's a nine, <laughs> and you are a blubbery bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I, look, I've never said I know a lot about manatees. I, I, I'll tell you what I do know. <laughs> I like how he thinks we're accusing him of like, why the fuck didn't you study for this? <laughs> I, don't, I've, I, I think Forrest, Forrest took me out to see some once. That yeah. was a day. Yeah. I usually take people to see manatees when I'm in Florida if they haven't seen them. Yeah. Winter's yeah. the best time. I've never, I've never heard of them. I don't think we have them in Australia. I do think they're the fat fucks of the sea. I, 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 I hope I got my one point for that. I, I, I feel like they are American dolphins that just sort of are fat and fucking lazy. And not that Americans are lazy. Well, you have an animal that's very closely related to manatees in Australia. It's called a dugong. That's why I thought you'd heard of it. Oh, dugong. Never heard of them either. Also, I, I love that you said not that Americans are lazy. You're a new American citizen doing an interview from bed in your pajama pants. <laughs> oh no, I'm bringing I'm bringing down the average for America. I'm not helping the American workforce by any stretch of the imagination. Babble. This summer, get the most out of your travels abroad by learning a language of your destination with Babble, the number one selling language learning app. From ordering in restaurants to asking directions or gaining a deeper understanding of the culture. Babbel makes the whole process of learning a new language activity fun and easy. With bite-sized lessons you can actually use in the real world. Babbel is a can't miss travel essential. Now, I myself, uh, you wouldn't know this to look at me. I'm not 
well versed in other languages. So <laughs> I've decided that I'm going to join Babel and I'm going to learn uh, Spanish. Mamma mia! I'm looking forward to that. Babel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a language on the go. I'm not even good at English, to be honest. Unlike the infamous language classes you took in high school, Babbel designs their courses with practical, real-world conversations in mind. You'll get to use in everyday life. Other language learning apps use A1 for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Ooh. See, the other one, some bloke's just written the bloody thing, and then... Babel comes in with all the experts to make it perfect. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. <laughs> there are so many ways to learn with Babel, in addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you will get an additional three months for free. Uh, you don't have to be a math person at six months. Six months and you're only paying for three. Six months at the price of three. Just go to babbel.com. And use the promo code I don't know. That's B A B B E L dot com code I don't know for an extra three months free. CBD isn't about what you feel, it's what you don't feel. Stress, anxiety, pain. I use CBD myself sometimes if I've been playing golf and my muscles are sore or whatnot, which is often because I'm a terrible golfer and I think my swing is not great. I use CBD to make me feel better. Feels. Feels is a premium CBD that will help uh, to keep your head clear and feel your best. <laughs> it's hassle-free, delivered directly to your door. CBD naturally helps and can reduce uh, stress, anxiety, pain, uh, sleeplessness, and there's no hangover with CBD or addiction. Just place a few drops of Feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding a right dose is important. Everyone's different, so don't overdo it. Don't under, yeah, yeah, it's up to you. I'm not a doctor, you see. I'm not a doctor. Uh, in fact, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help you guide your personal experience so that you'll find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best out of your CBD. So they'll nurse you through the experience. You'll be ready to go. No more anxiety, no nothing. You got the number there to go. Join the Feels monthly membership. Makes your self-care easy. You save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Hold on, I bloody lost the thing again, Jack. It's down here. Okay, oh, no, 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 it's good, it's good. Start feeling better with Feels. <laughs> Become a member today by going to feels.com slash IDK and you will get 5% off your foot. Wait, I've got to read that. A bloody typo here. They've written 50%. It wouldn't be 50%. They're offering half price? What? With your first order and free shipping? How are, they, how are Feels making money? All right, well, I've said it, so it means it's true. <laughs> So, so go to, that's feels, F-E-A-L, <laughs> F-E-A-L-S dot com slash I-D-K to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels, F-E-A-L-S dot com slash I-D-K. All right, let's go through these questions. All right, Forrest, um, what is a manatee? Jim said it's an American dolphin. Other countries have sleek dolphins. Fat fuck of the sea. They look like they should be in smaller bodies, but they overeat. Close to walruses or seals. Yeah, um, that was wrong. Uh, but <laughs> so, okay, so when you say American dolphin, okay, there is an animal in Australia called a dugong that is closely related to a manatee. They're in the same, uh, same family called Serenia. And so the dugongs branched off on one side and the manatees branch off on the other side, but they're very close related. And the difference is a dugong looks just like a manatee, except its tail looks like a dolphin tail. 
whereas a manatee's tail, the, the different types of manatees have like a paddle round shaped tail. So the the fat dolphin would be more accurate for the Australian version, which is the dugong. So uh, in your face. All right. Yeah. No. All right. I, I, I got I to tell you that everything you said then sounded more complicated than when we were doing the the uh, Lord of the Rings. If, if you took that out, if you took that out and put it in the Lord of the Rings documentary and went, the Dugon sees the manatee and the thing and their tail, when they, it sounded very mythical to me. All that. I said but Serenia. Right, so the I'm family not, Serenia is yeah, but the. But just to, the answers that I think would have been good. I think you're a little bit more combative with me as a guest. I than also you normally think part of it might be you're, <laughs> you're watching TV at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I, I, should, I should turn that up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't fucking understand any of that. <laughs> okay. I'm going watch some so, more like, things about you in your stomach. Acceptable animal uh, name, uh, like uh, things to say a man to be would be a marine mammal would be good. Um, an herbivore. They live... Uh, they live in an aquatic environment. Totally would have been acceptable. Any of those, not not fat fuck of the sea. I'm not gonna. That's why I didn't give. Fat fuck of the sea implies that they live in an aquatic environment, <laughs> <laughs> and they're fat. But you did get mammal right, and but the problem with you saying that they you, you think they're a mammal is that afterwards you said that they might be a tadpole at the beginning, which would imply they're amphibian. <laughs> you said something about a turtle, which would be like <laughs> yeah. So you were all uh, over the place. Look, I- I, I agree with science. I understand that dolphins and stuff are mammals. and I, We've had this argument before. Mm-hmm. I still mm-hmm. think they're closer related to fish than they are to us just because they'd have a better conversation. Yeah, we, yeah if, we've heard about if the a dolphin, if a, if, a, if, a, if a manatee started chatting to a, a fish, it would have way more to talk about than to talk to us if it could talk. Okay, well, the conversation might be like this. The fish would come up and be like, what are you doing? And then the manatee is nursing its young under its flipper where the mammary gland would be and be like, I'm feeding this baby milk. You don't do that. And the fish would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? We don't need milk. And then it'd be like, what's that on your body? Hair? And be like, yeah, I have hair. No, you, and then, you seem to think, yeah. you seem to think all the, you seem to think all the fish are going to get together and body shame each other. That's not what they chat about. Yeah. That's not what they chat about. Like, like what, what fucking shit society is the, is the fish world where they're all just going, what's that on your body? That looks gross. No, they come up. What are they going to talk about? TV? They, they don't, yeah, they, they don't have Instagram, so they go, don't know that they're not hot. They go, they go, have you seen the coral over there? And you go, no, I haven't seen the coral. Ah, oh, pretty good. That's what they chat about. Coral's their TV. <laughs> Coral's their TV. Uh, all right. Um, are, are dugongs manatees? He said, sure. Um, they're not. So that's what I was saying before. They're closely they're, related. They're, very, they're closely related. They're, but I thought you would know them. I thought in Australia you had seen a dugong or know them because in They'd definitely be in the Queensland area because they'd be in the warmer waters. They probably wouldn't be. Uh, I don't know their whole range down there. And there was another animal called a stellar sea cow that we asked about. That was also in that in the dugong uh, side of the Serenia family. Um, they're extinct now. They were hunted to extinction. They live like in the Bering Sea. They couldn't dive was their big problem. And they were massive and they were like killed for their uh, just their blubber and different and just probably their meat and stuff, too. So just to confirm, stellar sea cow is not where manatees get their burgers. No, it's not. Okay, so that was wrong as well. Okay. Dugong. Why is it called the Serenia yeah. category? Um, Serenia is the family. So then from that you branch off, and I've, I've she. This is the tri- trichechidae. Is the is the um, is uh, I'm sorry. The is I might have the family in the order wrong. See, this is why you shouldn't have me on. Oh, but. the comments are gonna fucking be terrible. <laughs> oh no! Hold on. Okay. Check your notes. <laughs> Let's keep that in there. Um. And then, so the manatees, there's three different types of manatees. There's the West Indian manatee, which is the kind you find in Florida. Um, there's two subspecies that the Florida manatee and the Caribbean manatee. They're very, very, very similar. You, they'd be hard to tell apart, but that's the West Indian manatee. There's an Amazonian manatee in South America, and there's a West African manatee in Africa, of course. So those are so how many types. was that? Five? I said seven. That's there's three, there's three, there's three types of manatees. There's one, the West Indian manatee that, that, Technically, as is divided into two species, so you could say four, but yeah, you said seven. So you're wrong on that. Close. But enough. what about the dugong? That's very closely related. Not a manatee. To the manatee. That, yeah, but it's not a manatee. So you wouldn't call it a manatee. You call it a dugong. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. large is a full-grown Florida manatee? He said nine feet long and yeah. nine thousand nine hundred pounds. Yeah, 9, this 000. one. This is where you uh-huh. got your points. You, yeah, the on average, an adult manatee will be between nine and ten feet, and they'll get to around a thousand pounds. So you're really close on that. 
they can get as big as 13 feet and 3,500 pounds. So that's when they get. Right, but most of those vanities are in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> we only have corn. Yeah, um. yeah the manatees, the, the reason they're called the Florida manatee, which I thought is like, it's, it is, I didn't realize this till we were like putting this together, the Florida man, Florida yeah. manatee, yeah. Um, is because that species lives primarily in Florida. They will. Uh, and some, they do math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they will make their foot. Some of them have gone as far north as like Chesapeake Bay and they go, they'll go, they'll go make their way all the way over to Louisiana on the Gulf Coast side. And if, some of them gone up the Mississippi River and end up in like, uh, I think near St. Louis or something like that. But those ones have had to been helped to get back to Florida because it gets too cold. A couple of them had to. I also hear that the Florida vanity is a swing voter. Can't decide which way it's going to go right <laughs> yeah. to the very end of the election. It's super anti-mask. Um, <laughs> what, uh, let's see, how large is a baby manatee when they were born? He said three feet long, 150 pounds. Yeah, you were close at the beginning. It's around three feet, but it's 60 to 70 pounds. You changed it from 90 to 150. So you didn't. Yeah, but that what, the manatee got diabetes during pregnancy. During pregnancy. Ge gestational <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> Um, how long can they hold their you know, breath? I was, ten, I was 10 and a half pounds, right? Because my mum got diabetes during during uh, pregnancy, right? And they, they didn't know that in the 70s, that diabetic people have massive babies. So anyway, little oh. tidbit about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long can they hold their breath for? He says 20 minutes because they've got a blowhole. They'd eventually have to come up. This is where you got your other half point. They can... They'll, if they're resting, sleeping, they'll hold their breath for 20 minutes. And they usually do this. They'll either float near the surface or they'll go to the bottom of where they're at. And they're always in shallow water. You won't, you won't find manatees. They're generally in eight to 10 feet of water or shallower, uh, the Florida manatees. We're talking mostly about Florida manatees here at the end, so just so everyone knows. But uh, so 20 minutes if they're resting, if they're active, they're swimming, they're, they're feeding or any other activity, three to five minutes they have to take a breath. And they don't have a blowhole. You're wrong. They, they breathe through their nostrils. They have two nostrils right where you'd expect them on, on, on the front of their face there. And they're like specially made so that they seal up so that no water can get in there. And sometimes they don't even come all the way to the surface. They'll just stick their nose above the surface, open their nostrils, exchange air, and then they'll go back down and hold their breath again. So, so technically they have two blowholes. No, because it's not a blowhole. It's nostrils. So it's a are totally they blowing, Are they blowing out, uh, out of it? Um, they'll breathe in and out of it, yeah. I call my nose a blowhole. Do you? <laughs> okay. All right, guys, give him a point. Yeah, yeah, give him another yeah. point. So, You're so, still a blubbery okay. bitch, though. Sorry. <laughs> so, so, so 20 minutes was 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 right for when they're sleeping. Um, yeah, the, the little bit different than dolphins. They will they'll sleep and then they'll have to come, wake up, come back up for a breath, and then go back to sleep again. If they're swimming really fast, you know, or at like their top speed, which is at, at best 15 miles per hour. Sometimes they're usually going slower than that. They'll three to five minutes. So that, there you go. All right. Top speed's 15 miles an hour. <laughs> in bursts, in short bursts. Most of the time they're just lollygagging around. They're just floating around <laughs> or they just flick their tail once or twice. And, you know, they're very big so they, they can propel themselves a few feet, but they don't, yeah, 15 miles an hour is. So how far would, the, how far would a manatee travel in a day? Like if it was, if it was just doing its normal day work, a what? mile? They, they sleep, they sleep almost half the day. Like on average, I know that let's say like some will say a more active one will only sleep three or four hours a day, but most of them sleep closer to 10, 12 hours a day. So half the day they're sleeping the rest of the day. They're pretty much just looking for food or fresh water or warm water if it's cold out because they can't be in cold water for too long. So, so a manatee is basically gym in quarantine, yeah. <laughs> get up, ride a bike for three minutes, yeah. get back in bed, look for food, look for sex. Breathe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What? I do. I, 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 I'm a manatee. What? <laughs> One of the questions that we didn't get to was, are they smart? So that kind of ties in this. And the answer is probably not. Um, their brains, if you saw their brains would be completely smooth. You know, if you look at Shit. like the, look at a human's brain or dolphins of the cortical fo folds that are in there, that's yeah. like a sign of intelligence. A, a manatee's brain is smooth, very smooth, and it also has, as, you know, they they measure the ratio of a the weight of the brain to the weight of the animal, and they look at that as a sign of intelligence too. Manatees have the lowest of any uh, mammal that is out there. Mm. So, but they don't need to know a lot. They don't have any natural predators. Um, they don't, all they need to know is like, wake up, breathe, eat some food and, you know, fart a, f a couple times and then have sex once in a while. And that's it. They don't need much of a brain. Sounds dope. Yeah. So they're dumb animals. Did they ever trick you at work? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, we had trouble catching some sometimes. We had some that were tagged, uh, like, like for that were either injured or they, uh, and they're rehabilitated. And then you put like a radio tag on them to follow them and you'll go out and you'll weigh them and see if they're oh, doing okay. I thought that you just spray painted the side of it when you tag. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then trying to catch one isn't as easy as you think. I don't know why you think it's easy. Maybe you don't think it's easy. Well, what about the people How that do you like, catch them? Yeah. Cause the people that put, put Trump on the back. Of one of the manatees, right in Florida. Yeah, that was um, so because they're very they're very slow animals and they don't move around a lot. Sometimes they'll just be kind of hang out in one area for hours. Stuff will grow on it like algae. That's what's growing on the back. So even they're they're a nice gray color, but sometimes you'll see them browner or kind of greenish or something. That's algae that's actually growing on their back. So somebody when they wrote Trump in it, they actually dug out. It looked like the algae uh. to me on that. Which still is not, no, you don't want to be cool. scraping any animal. It's still it's still a terrible thing that, and whoever did it, if they were caught, would be put in jail because it's a, it's a, it's a federal offense. So that wasn't something they carved into their skin, thank God, you know. That was just something into the algae. But, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's how that happened. So, yeah. And then you said it's a lot harder to catch one than you'd think. How do you, how would you go about catching well, one? Well, these ones had radio transmitters on them. So we would it, we you'd wait a couple months and you'd want to catch one again that this one that had been rehabilitated for instance and was released. You wanted to make sure it was eating properly. So you wanted to make sure its weight was either higher than you had been or at least at the same weight when you released it. So there's a uh, th around the bottom of their tail, this little area we've mentioned this peduncle it's called where the base of the tail narrows and then there's a big paddle in the back. You tie there'd be a, a radio transmitter that floats on the top of the service that you'd be able to get with the equipment that you had. That you'd be able to identify that that's the manatee you're looking for. Hmm. You take this capture boat that has an engine in the middle of the boat, not on the back. So the propeller is not on the back. So it's in the center of the boat. So you're not cutting anything, you know, the animal up in the back. And then you'd basically find it and circle with the boat around with a net and then get it in the net and pull it onto this boat. And you're almost sinking the boat to get on there. And then the boat itself has a scale and a whole bunch of stuff that you can like bring up and weigh the manatee. They'll do like a sonogram on it to see if, if it's blubber thickness is decreasing or increasing or staying the same. And you just kind of assess the health. Is there it. like an automated crane or is it manual? You've and got a, a bunch of people. There's a crane pulling. on the boat. No, because they're the thousand pounds. Minimum, yeah, that's what you know? I was going to so say. Like, like how many fucking people would you need? You'd need six or seven people to pull the animal onto the boat. Right. That, that you do manually. And then once it's on there, you get the net off and then you put um, straps underneath it. And there's an actual structure on the boat that would lift it up as a, like a scale. And then that's a way it's, it's pretty. Well, why, why wouldn't you just leave him alone? Just leave him alone. <laughs> because if the man, if the, if the animal is not doing well, if it had been rehabilitated, like let's say it was hit by a boat or it had got something else had happened to it that, that caused it to stop eating. Like it was, it was stressed out from being in the cold too long. Cause they can't take that for too long. Once you're releasing it, you want to make sure it's doing Okay. So if two or three months afterwards you see, you've seen it's lost a significant amount of weight, you want to bring it back in that captivity and feed it again and try and rehabilitate it so it's strong enough to get in the wild. That's why. Now, this is a question for you, uh, first. Uh, Thanks. Did being a, 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 an expert in manatees mm. ever get you any pussy? Was there was there manatee fans? Were there girls in, <laughs> in the bars in, in, in Miami where you're like, I deal with manatees, man. And they were like, yeah, oh, this guy's cool. Um... I don't I bet you there was marine biology. People always seem more impressed that you're a marine biologist than that than you were a comic. Definitely, I think definitely people are more impressed that I was a marine biologist. But uh, I don't know if there was a direct like I've worked with manatees and then I'm hooking up. But I I, I think that women it was a good end to talk to women. Like and uh, you, first they would think I was bullshitting and then. You know, I'd have a picture of me with a manatee on my phone. Like, hey, well, if I was lying, what would happen? You know, that kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's good as well. And it's always good to have a picture with someone fatter than you, so you look trim in the photo. <laughs> did, you, did you have a choice to work with other mammals of the sea and you chose that just for the photo ops? Of course, yeah. yeah everyone looks slimmer next to a manatee. <laughs> <laughs> this is online dating profile. It's yeah. even a manatee. It's like, I'm on the right. <laughs> oh. Oh, I, once, I once went to the Great Barrier Reef with Forrest and he, he got on a wetsuit and everything. He goes, I'll take you out scuba diving. And he was like a fucking graceful dolphin he was. <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the Japanese and Chinese tourists were losing their fucking shit looking at him. He got, he got more photos than the fish. <laughs> that it's was so the beautiful. most sincere you've ever been to this point in our entire relationship. <laughs> When I got out of the water, you're like, you were like an angel in the water. <laughs> <laughs> you were very sincere. You were like, wow. Like, I was like, 
Yeah, and then for many years, I was <laughs> in the water. I knew I knew how to swim pro- at the same time when I knew how to walk. So at first, you'd be, I'd be swimming tentatively, like with the oxygen, just breathing, just to, don't die, don't die, you know, just swimming along, trying not to try to breathe. I always liken, I liken scuba diving to anal sex. I, I can see why other people enjoy it, and when I remembered to breathe, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's receiving, more receiving than yeah, giving. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, but uh, uh, so I was scuba diving, and, and I was watching Forrest. And Forrest wouldn't just—he was like a little mermaid. He'd, he'd go, he'd go, he'd be like doing signals to you. There's fish over here, fish over here. And then Forrest would wave at me like, "Come, come to this fish." And I, and I would sort of moonwalk over there, right? very, very gentle, very, very gentle. And Forrest, if he got to the spot where I was meant to be early, to keep himself occupied, he'd swim around in figure eights and do backflips and shit. <laughs> it was bizarre. Hey, Jim, fun. hey, Jim, watch this. Watch it's this. Fun. It's like a child. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it was, just this, it was this rotating large man just in the water. <laughs> It was fucking. They, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding about the the Asian tourists. Look, like, I, like I'm not saying they're the Asians and cameras or whatever like that. No, I'm it was, gold, it you, was Golden Week then. There was a lot of a it lot was of. Go, it yeah. was Golden Week. Was what is that? China is Golden China, Week. China. It was, that was all Chinese tourists. Yeah. Golden. What's Golden okay. Week? So if I might remember Golden Week wrong, I never knew about this, right? But what happens in China is is that I think it might be a fifth of twenty percent of the population, right? The 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 Chinese. And they only tell you one week out. One week out, they have a lottery where 20% of the population gets next week off. Oh, wow. And yeah, I don't remember if that's Japanese, right. Japanese, right. Japanese, yeah. Japanese. Oh, it is? Mm-hmm. Oh, Japanese. Okay, Japanese. Japanese. Yeah. 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 And is it 20%? It's, I don't have that. It, it says Golden Week is a collection of four national holidays within seven days. Mm-hmm. In combination with well-placed weekends, the Golden Week becomes one of Japan's three busiest holiday seasons besides New Year. And the Oban week. Yeah, because when we went out there, we had to drive up from, from Townsville to Cairns, which is four hours. So we left early in the morning. It was me, you, Kate, and Hank. And then we drive there, and we almost missed the boat. And I, like, ran in. I was like, we got to get on the blah, blah, blah. And I remember the captain came out. He was holding some packages or whatever. And I guess he saw that it was you. And he goes, well, we're certainly not going to leave without Jim Jeffries. And we're like, ah. <laughs> and then we got on there, and every seat was taken up by these tourists. And he just let us sit in the bridge. Remember, we sat in the bridge of the boat up there with the captain. Yeah, yeah, we sat in the bridge, but it was going because all the Japanese they get they get told the week out that they get the holiday, and then they all just you know a lot of them nicked off to Australia for their vacation as they would. You got a week off, why yeah. not, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, they were very they, they, there's pictures of forest swimming <laughs> on people's mantles in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know about that, but. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what is unique about their teeth? I assume not made out of Starburst. No, no. They, they, uh, I'll, I'll have a real go at this. They're hollow. No. Um, they're all molars, and they never stop growing. So they'll start growing at the back of their jaw, and then they'll move forward, and as they get to a certain port, point forward, they'll just fall out. And the reason is is because it's another question here is what they eat. They, they're herbivores. They don't, eat, they don't eat plankton. They don't eat fish. They eat only plants. And... And eating plants from the bottom of the this the the floor, they're gonna have a lot of sand in it and stuff. So imagine eating food with sand in it is gonna wear your teeth down pretty quick. So they're not like discriminatory, like we gotta get the sand out or whatever. They're just chewing on vegetation. The sand wears down their teeth, so they have this special system where the teeth will keep falling out in the front and they'll grow new ones. So yeah, there you go. That's the answer to that. All right, we just talked about what they eat, um, so it's not. Oh yeah, and so they eat not forest cum. Not forest cum. Well, maybe not, not plankton. I mean, it could have happened, uh, but vegetation. <laughs> and it doesn't. They prefer seagrass, which grows on the bottom of of, of the sea floor. It's, it's it's benthic, as they call it, on the bottom, and they prefer that. That's their preferred food. But they will eat food even out of the water. Like uh, if they're in a canal and there's like a tree hanging, you can see them like coming up out of the water, grabbing some of the leaves. They'll eat anything that's like some sort of vegetation that they find. They're not very picky, but they prefer the seagrass. And they eat, I think it's like between 5 and 15% of their body weight a day in vegetation. So if they weigh 1,000 pounds, or the, that one's eating 100 or 150 pounds of vegetation a day, wet vegetation. So is, is there an argument that a vegan diet makes you fat? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, I mean, Jimmy I don't carbs. think that's ever been disputed. I think that there's plenty of fat vegans. I don't think any, you still have to eat sensible. Like you could eat like 
you know, sugar is still vegan as far as I know, right? So you could eat tons of sugar and you could just drink soda and eat potato chips and that wouldn't be good. So, but I, they're not, I wouldn't, I, they're not as fat as you think. I mean, they have a layer of blubber, but they have to stay. They're in, big boned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have, they are big boned. <laughs> their bones are all solid. All manatee bones are solid. There's no bone marrow in them, which makes them very susceptible, you know, to getting damaged easily by a boat strike, which is what we'll talk about later. I'll tell you what I know about, about manatees. If okay. there was, if there was a nightclub in the sea, that'd always be the doorman. <laughs> <laughs> But they're very gentle. They're not. They're not a aggressive animals. Yeah, no. You need to keep calm so fights don't break out. But you know, you need the size there. You don't want a, like a crazy guy fucking on the door. You need yeah, someone most, with a steady. Most steady of the head. security guards I know are actually like giant teddy bears. Like my yeah. my friend Winston is seven seven foot one, and he's Holy like the smoke. sweetest guy ever. Yeah. But was a b bodyguard for like major celebrities. Yeah. He's just scary looking. Yeah, I guess that checks out then. Manatees would be the doormen of the sea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyways, we can what are going. what are prehensile lips? So anything that's prehensile in, in, in on an animal is something that can grab something. It, it, it's like like think of an elephant's trunk as prehensile. Uh, mm. um, certain monkeys have tails, or they can curl them around trees and, and use and hang them. So it's just kind of like something like a grasper with a hand. So manatees have that face. If you rec if you've ever seen it, they have like two big flaps on, on their front. shirt. Oh yeah, I have a manatee on today. But they have these <laughs> two big flaps here, and they actually can use them like hands. So when they're in the sand looking for vegetation, they can actually manipulate and grab seagrass or any other vegetation with those lips, and then move it into their mouth. And they use their flippers as well too. But they're very specialized lips, so they're prehensile lips, and that. And I still stand. I still stand by my answer. I, I've seen a Kardashian close a garage door with it. <laughs> <laughs> you could be right, actually. Maybe I'll give you. A, I'll give you another point for that. So manatees would be so <laughs> good at oral if they could do it. <laughs> Yeah, well, right? I, think, I think they could. Oh, yeah, yeah, manatees. Yeah, Sixty nining manatees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is a manatee a ruminant or a non-ruminant? And what the fuck is r ruminant? <laughs> uh, what did Jim say? He said yes, he ruminant. Said, ruminant. Yeah, and then he said, don't fucking ask me all these questions. I don't know. Yeah. Manatees are non ruminants. <laughs> so, ruminant is like a cow where they will chew some food and they have, they're, they're, basically, a ruminant has multiple stomachs that they'll digest their food in. And a lot of times they'll chew, put it in their stomach, regurgitate it, chew it again, put it in another. And so, that's what a ruminant is. A non ruminant uh, will digest only in one stomach. And so, uh, oh, well, well, that's a trick question. Then. No, I, I, I'll tell you all the things that I know about manatees. They're non-human. <laughs> They're non-cats. They're non-cows. No, they're probably cows. No, but that was one of the questions that we didn't answer. They're called sea cows. Yeah. They're called sea cows. Is another name for manatees. You call? Yeah, I forget what you said. Fat fuck or something yeah, like that. Fat but, fuck of the sea. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're not related to porpoise. cows. They're not related to cows. They're just dopey. But no one wants to eat a manatee. You said no natural predators. Don't the there's a lot of alligators down there. An alligator wouldn't take a chunk out of one? No, well, the, okay, so they're they're not related to cows, but their babies are called calves. I should have said that when they're born. So when you, you know, each animal has a certain name, so they're called calves when they're born. So, um, and they are called sea cows, even though they aren't related to, to cows. But they, so it, that name was put on them. I don't know when that name was put on, but that's that's just that what stuck with them, even though their stomach system is different. They're cl more closely related to elephants than cows. That's a... a so they have the prehensile lips, like a trunk of an elephant. They have the, um, the nails and their flippers, uh, uh, the similar to elephants. They, they, they have some skeletal structure um, that's similar to elephants. The, when I was going back to Serenian, what I said before, that is very closely related to uh, um, where elephants branched off in the evolutionary scale. So they're not closely related to cows, even though that's the name. Now, uh, alligator... Alligator, so manatees can go in salt and fresh water and brackish water. So they could be in water where an alligator is. However, an alligators, American alligators, don't generally get bigger than manatees. Like for an alligator to come up and get onto the side, it, it wouldn't even really, it, it, they don't really mess with them because they're as big in them and they wouldn't attack something that big. Now, if there's a calf, a small manatee, a baby manatee, that's when there might be an issue. But the mother will protect it from the alligator, and yeah, they might—they're very slow animals, but they're still very strong. They weigh a thousand pounds or more when they're adults, and they're going to protect, you know, their 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 calves from the um, any predators like that. But it isn't a natural predator. Like an alligator isn't inclined to eat a manatee. An alligator is going to eat fish, bird, turtle, things like that. There are saltwater crocodiles. The only time I've ever seen 
the uh, 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 manatee being messed around with another, uh, eaten by another animal, I should say, it was already dead, and it was a dead baby manatee. It was on a golf course, and some crocodiles were fighting over it, but it was already oh, had geez. passed away. So it wasn't like they killed it. So it was. But, so they are amphibious. It was on a golf course. It was dead. <laughs> it was a dead baby. It was a baby. It was a calf. It was a calf manatee, and I was called to pick it up. So because anytime a manatee. Um, dies in in florida the state has to do a necropsy on it they an to, angel gets its wings <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 why would that happen that seems so every have to get, time a manatee dies in florida yeah. well, in florida yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's a, a florida manatee when it when it dies uh, they have to perform necropsy on it. they have to determine what the cause of death was by the well, time golf, I, obviously. By the time I had gotten there, well, that's what happened. The golf course called <laughs> and said, slice. <laughs> there, there's some gators, there's some crocodiles fighting over a, a baby manatee. By the time I got in there, they had done fighting. They didn't eat it, so they just left it there. Fun. Yeah. So did you used to have a beeper? Like, I did have a beeper. Right. Yeah, when I had this job, I had a beeper, a pager, yeah. Oh, okay. And so, it, like, you'd be talking to some bird in a bar and be, like, some <laughs> Cuban chick in a bar in Miami. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I love Cuban food. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to meet your family. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, there's a baby manatee on a golf course. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta take this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we didn't get any 911 calls at, at night for manatees. It would usually wait till the next day. So, yeah. a chance. Did you ever have to? Is there any footage of you on the news going, the manatee population has decreased over the last decade due to blah, 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 blah? Uh, Did you ever do that? No, I don't think there's any footage of me saying something like that, but there was some, there were some manatees that made their way up into like a culvert, a pipe system, a stormwater drainage system, and they ended up like a half a mile near the close, nearest water source, and they were in the parking lot of a hospital. But in the storm drains. And then and they during had- that news story, Forrest was in the background on bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Yeah, you could see me on bath salts. <laughs> um, I was there for that. I don't remember if I made the news there for that, but I don't remember ever being on the news for it. But I was heavily involved in Manti Protection Day County. I was the guy you would call. For a while. He was like those blokes in the background of Good Morning America that hold a sign going, <laughs> we've come from Kansas. <laughs> um, let's see. When do they reach sexual maturity? He said same as humans, so 45? Yeah, no. I mean, they're, they, they're lucky to live that long in the wild, 45, because, you know, there's a lot of threats to them. But um, females, I think it's like three to five years, and then the males is a little bit longer. I think it's five to seven is when they reach sexual maturity. And then, so the the females could start, you know, around three, four years could... Yeah, but are they being forced by like a family member or something? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> honestly, the way that they the way that they mate, they call them mating herds or something like that. A cavorting was a term that we'd use when we were doing manatee surveys cavorting. if we saw the behavior. And it's generally one female trying to get away from about eight or seven males, you know. Uh, seven, so a manatee yeah. gang bang. Yeah, basically. <laughs> like, uh, there's, yeah. yeah, it's all it's all rape in their culture, right? Yeah. They're all, they're, they're not good. It's not, uh, yeah, and the male manatees are not very discriminate. The one time um, we would call the police sometimes if we had a dead manatee and we'd have to pull it in somewhere to get it out of the water. And so this police were pulling a, a big manatee. It was probably like 11, 12 feet. It was, it weighed probably 2,000 pounds. Um and, and it was a female manatee, and it was dead. And they were dragging it behind the boat. They tie a rope to its the, the base of the tail there, peduncle. And these, there was four or five male manatees following it, trying to have sex with the dead manatee. <laughs> oh, no. And they were pulling it up to a boat ramp, and all these kids were out there on their bikes. And like, what's it doing? And there's a giant manatee penis out, like, <laughs> trying to penetrate this dead female manatee. And we're like, ah, oh, they're just playing, kids. That was, just- the, that was the float that got nixed from the Macy's Day Thanksgiving <laughs> yeah, yeah, Parade. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm always fascinated by this man. Was they ever? Oh, hold on, about Steve. Oh, hey. Do they, oh, <laughs> um, do they? Do they ever? Do they ever partner up? Um, not really. <laughs> yeah, most. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Move the camera angle. Not, not generally. I mean, you can see a group of manatees together, but they're not generally sticking together. The mother, when she gives birth. And that's a question coming up. So it's it's the gestation period is 13 months, not four months. So it's over a year. Um, and she gives birth and she won't she won't be able she's not she won't have another um, calf for another two or three years. So it's a very slow process to build the population up. 
when that calf is born, the calf will stick with the mother for about two years, and then it'll be large enough and, and on its own after that. Sometimes they'll stick around a little bit longer than that. But so you'll see a mother and a calf together a lot of times, and sometimes you'll see another mother and a calf, and they might stick together. But and and they'll sometimes congregate in areas where there's warm water because in the winter when it's very cold, they can't be exposed to cold for too long, so they'll find these uh, warm sources. And you'll see tons of manatees grouped together in these areas, but they're not generally in a herd, as you would say, like that. They 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 tend to be more rogue, you know, like on their own. Quick question. Do they, Could do they, they, are, there, are there any, are there any homosexual manatees? Do they exist? Uh, I, I don't know, but I would say, I would say yes, because every animal that I've ever, I, I've, I haven't seen any evidence to suggest the contrary because there's homosexuality in almost every animal that's in the animal kingdom. They've, they've shown evidence. What, that it's a, what about trans humanities? Um, I don't know about that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, just, I, know, I yeah. just know a good one woman play womanities. <laughs> <laughs> womanities? Womanities. Yeah, womanities. <laughs> and, and, and it would start like, I wasn't like all the other manatees. And it would just be a single manatee in a chair in the middle of the stage. It'd be a great play. Something to think uh, about. Uh, yeah. Could a female manatee use Jim as a dildo? Um, sure. I, but I, you know, I don't know if <laughs> they it, use other close yeah. to elephants. Yeah, 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 that's true. True. And we've already decided that Jim is an elephant dildo. Not as big as elephants though. So <laughs> Jim, Jim, Jim couldn't crawl into the womb of a manatee. That, you, you would get well, stuck you halfway. Can try. You could try. How, you could try. How, how big is a manatee's dick? Um, I don't, I, I know I've seen them. And so, uh, <laughs> just, just on your internet, about two searches. foot, two foot, yeah. maybe they could be Why a little bit put bigger. put a ruler pretty, in your mouth pretty, and then dial it <laughs> Pretty girthy. <laughs> pretty girthy. That was a good one. <laughs> What is the just? I feel like this is not how you would treat other guests. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're a lot more considerate. Wait, so <laughs> you're pulling these huge manatees out of the water. What do you do with a dead manatee? Do you have a funeral? No, well, first, it's called a necropsy. And like an autopsy is performed in a human. If it's an animal, it's called a necropsy. So the state, F, the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, have people that will show up with a specialized trailer. It's like half of a pipe. And it, and you sink that into the water. You tie it to the the manatee's tail. You crank it in. You pull the trailer out. If it's really decomposed, like it's been out in the water for a long time, and it's decomposed, they'll do it on site because it's already kind of just turned into mush. If not, they would trailer it to wherever they were to St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, I think yeah, it's south of St. Petersburg. There's a their lab there, and then they're going to determine what caused the death because they want to keep a database of that. This year. All right, there is a huge die-off of manatees in, in 2021. I think the number, as of June 5th, so this has been a while ago, was already at 770, I'd want to say. And the record for any year was, I want to say, 826 or 825, and that was 2018. So they're going to surpass that. We're in we're in June right now. This comes out in July, this podcast. But That's because the yeah. manatees don't socially distance properly. I don't know. They have COVID. COVID. Yeah, you think it's COVID. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's mainly due because they're all starving this year. There's not the, – the food sources aren't where they used they're, – they're not there anymore, the seagrass and stuff, because most of it is because of water quality, pollution. Um, the seagrass isn't growing. Um, you know, there are people that will blame the manatees. There's a lot of people that don't like manatees a lot. You'd think that everyone loves manatees or the gentle giant or the, 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 basically the mascot of Florida and stuff like, you know, and, the, um, and people come there to see them, but there are people that don't like them because there are restrictions put in place to protect manatees, speed zones for boats. Um, they limit how like, like, uh, development can to, to, the, uh, be done, you know, that because it'll, you know, take away their habitat, let's say. And so people don't think that manatees are taking away their livelihood. And so there is an argument that I'm sure people would make, oh, the an manatees ate all the grass and all the vegetation. That's why it's gone. That's not what's going on. They've shown that, that there's been studies done. It's, it's well documented that, you know, there's pollution. There's a lot of people that live in Florida and there's a lot of runoff. There's nitrogen and phosphorus. And then that makes algal blooms and that chokes off all the oxygen in the water. The plants die and there's nothing for them to eat. So this year they're seeing all these emaciated, um, starving manatees, and the number is going to easily get above what the record was. So, and I'm jumping ahead, but there's you said there's a million of them. A million. In, now, in Florida, they estimate there was around 7,700, 7,800 on last count. Wow. And almost 800 have died this year already. By the time this comes out, it could be Jeez. closer to 900. So you're talking about 10 over 10% of the population is gone already this year. It, that number is going to get higher, so you're going to get closer 
to 15% probably. And if you remember 13 month gestation period, they have to wait two to three years to have another calf. So they don't repopulate rapidly. And there's other, you know, that the next year there's going to be more that die as well because they're dying from boat strikes as well. Boats that are hitting them all the time that, that kill them as well because people are going fast in areas they shouldn't. Um, so they have a lot of threats and there's not that many. They are not endangered anymore because during the Trump administration, the, the, all the, the environment, the, uh, the Department of the Interior said, hey, they're doing great. Their numbers are skyrocketing, even they're only 7,800. So they, because they don't know what the, the historical number was, but 7,800 still seems low. They took them off the endangered list, made them threatened, which is the next step down. But we'll see what happens with their numbers now. They might get put back on the endangered list. And that's and just the Florida manatee. The Florida manatee, yeah, which is the manatee, you know. That, is that because Trump? Because, you know, you always see with these government things that, like, there's some construction problem because there's an endangered bird that lives in yeah. the air or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do you reckon it's got something to do with Mar-a-Lago? I'm being serious about this. I thing. don't know He's... if it's something to do with Mar-a-Lago, Mar but, it, I mean, it could because I don't know what the water's like right off Mar-a-Lago, but I'm sure there's seagrass there and stuff. But it is always development versus the environment. That's how it always works. And manatees live in shallow water. Like I was saying, they live, they generally are in eight to 10 feet water or shallower, which is near where the houses are in Florida and everyone that builds on their seawalls and their docks. So if you want to build a really long dock because you have a mega yacht and you want to pull it up to your house, you, you have to get that permitted and you have to get it. Um, whatever environmental department is overseeing that area has to come out and do a survey. And if they see a certain amount of seagrass or, or habitat that not only is good for a manatee, but it's good for fish or, um, shellfish or anything like that, then they will not sometimes give that permit. And then people will be like, ah, fucking manatees, you know, or whatever animal they want to rail against. They're saying they're, they're stopping me from doing what I want to do. I want to go fast on my boat. I want to build here or develop here and they're not allowed to. So they foresee, they, they look at these animals as like a problem in their lives, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it's specifically Trump did that because of Mar-a-Lago, but I'm sure he had some Maybe there's some friends that wanted to build their dock somewhere. They wanted to do this or they wanted to ease up restrictions. They want to go fast on their speed boats in areas where they make them go they slow. they have their Trump boat parades. Yeah. So, that probably uh, affected yeah. the managers. Yeah. So it's, I, I years ago was at a, um, at like a, a boat show and we had a, a booth set up with some pictures of Manatee behind me and it was just educational. And these drunk guys came up with imaginary shotguns. They were pretending they had shotguns and they were pretending to shoot the manatees. <laughs> And then they wiped clean all the literature I had off the table. And they told me, I shoot the manatees once and then I shoot them twice to make sure they're dead. And there was like, uh, no one did anything to help me. There's just drunk. I was like, all right, guys, thanks. And we started cleaning up the literature and stuff. And it's like, they, they believe, oh, the, one of the guys told me that, um, that manatees killed his friend. Because his friend committed suicide because he lost his job because of manatees. <laughs> it's like, it's, he was making a correlation because he worked in a boatyard and he lost his job because manatees were restricting boat use. And it was like, it's hard not to laugh even though he said his friend committed suicide. But it was like, manatees did it. it was like, so Jim was correct in this in saying that rednecks are the number one threat. To manatees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, loss of I'm habitat. Pretty much right, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, you, you, I, I'll give you another point for that because I said you. I should have given you another point there. Yeah, rednecks. Um, it's boat strikes because, you know, they, they're, like I said, they, they're in shallow water. They have to come to the surface to breathe. And there's areas that they congregate in where there's food sources or warm water. And they, the, the state government and, and federally mandated has made these, um, like, uh, manatee zones where you have to go slow, especially in the winter. Cause when it's colder, they congregate in certain areas where it's warmer and people are supposed to go idle speed with their boats. But some people still fly through there because if, you know, manatees come in to breathe to the surface, or it's in shallow water and a boat hits it, um, it doesn't always kill it. If a boat runs over it and just hits it with its propeller, it l might leave scars, mm -hmm. but they could live through that. What really injures them is the blunt force trauma from the hull of a boat going 40 miles an hour hitting a manatee. Because remember I was telling you their bones aren't hollow like ours. They're solid. And that's so that they have ballast when they're like filling up their lungs as so they can sink. And it's kind of like a scuba diver has a buoyancy compensator. They do the same thing. So their bones help to keep them submerged below the water, but it makes them very brittle when they're not hollow and they'll just shatter and then they'll have internal bleeding and then they'll bleed out internally and die and stuff. So that's how they die a lot. Uh, if, a, if a man gets run over by a boat and the propeller hits it, they often live, even though they'll be in a lot of pain, they will heal. And almost every manatee that is out there in the wild can be identified by scars from boat propellers. Like there's a whole catalog where you can be like, that's this man team oh, because wow. it has the scar. And, and when, uh, when it initially gets hit by, struck by a boat with a propeller, 
um, it'll be red. Like you'll see it'll be a red wound, but then it heals white, mm -hmm. but it doesn't ever go away. So it'll be like this white scarring. And if you ever go to Florida and you see mantis, you'll see all this white scarring on them. It's all from boat strikes, boat propellers and stuff like that. And they have this in incredible ability to heal. There was one manatee and uh, God, I, I want to say his name was Scarface or her name, but I, it might not be, but I, it had got hit by a boat on its head and part of its head was exposed. And I think Oof. one of its eyes and its whole head, and they uh -huh. were trying to capture it so they could bring it in to rehabilitate it. Release it. They were never able to capture it. They couldn't get to it because it was really, it was just difficult. And the next season when it came back, it came back and it was alive and it healed its whole head up. Like they have this amazing, amazing ability to heal themselves. Uh, unless, you know, that blunt force trauma is what really ends up killing them a lot. And they also can die in like uh, pipes that are outfalls, stormware outfalls will get stuck in there sometimes, but a lot of those have been graded up over the years, you know, so they can't get in there anymore. They used to get crushed in the locks a lot, the salinity control structures where they open up, you know, water to prevent flooding and stuff. Since that time, they've installed sensors and in almost all of those similar to an elevator. So if something's in there, it'll bounce back up and it won't crush them and stuff. But Jim so, called them a super porpoise before. So they are like superpowers. Yeah. Regenerative I mean, they're pretty, superpowers. Yeah, they're pretty incredible. <laughs> re, re, do, they, do they ever take down a boat though? Do they ever sink a boat? No, it wouldn't. It, it, I mean, because boats, even the smallest boat, I mean, unless it's a little skiff, you know, that might, you know, but uh, um, even the smallest boat, you know, weighs usually like a thousand, 2000 pounds. So that going 40 miles an hour, hitting it, it's going to, it would, you'd feel it. If you'd hit it, people would know. I'm sure people have hit and kept going because if you do that and you're in a zone where you're supposed to be on slow, you'll be put in jail, you know? So if you hit a manatee and you're going to the proper speed, will they be fine or will they, will they still be injured? If you're going idle speed, they call it, which is you're throwing no wake. You're going around five miles per hour. They'll they'll see the boats there and they'll get out of the they'll hear it they'll see it and they'll swim out of the way you know they'll you'll sometimes you're going that speed and you'll see just this kind of rush of water come up and you'll see you know their footprint which is like little circles kind of going mm. away and then you'll see oh there's some manatees there whatever and then they they'll avoid you okay. but when you're going forty or fifty miles per hour and they're near the surface taking a breath it's like it, it's done you know. So. All right, last question to go over. Can they? Can Why did you choose manatees over all the other animals you could have studied? What, what, what I didn't, drew you I, to manatees? I didn't study manatees. I worked for my, I haven't been looking at the camera the whole time, by the way. I'm not used to looking at it, but um, <laughs> uh, I worked for Miami Dade County's Department of Environmental Resources Management, DERM, otherwise. And it's, Derm. it had a lot of functions at the department, but the department, uh, the, the section I worked in was called Restoration Enhancement. And we were concerned with water quality in Biscayne Bay and the Everglades, the uh, tributaries that fed Biscayne Bay, uh, coral reefs um, um, and seagrass monitoring and stuff like that. But the manatee protection portion of in this department um, had a person that was in charge of it had been reassigned to something else. And it kind of was floating around and people were taking care of some of the duties that needed to be done, but no one was really assigned to it. And I started to show an interest in manatees when we were out there, like uh, spotting them or, or doing some of the surveys or something. And so because I showed an interest, I was asked if I wanted to help take over or uh, like spearhead like this program that already existed. So I took over as the point person for, I guess it was about seven years in Dade County as the person that was in charge of the manatee protection program in this department. So it wasn't something I did studied. Did you save any, did you? Did your actions save any manatees? Are you responsible for saved manatees personally? Um, you mean like what, one that was injured or something like that? Or yeah, like did you did you find some place where a family of manatees were endangered and relocate them or something like that? Like, or did you do No, I never relocate them. Or... I, I mean, I I don't know if I saved a a single man. Oh, uh, there was one time there was a guy trying to catch a manatee with like a grappling hook. I saved that one, I think. But uh, because <laughs> people with want a grappling hook, like, like he was like, trying to swing like it. When you're in a video arcade, you want to pick up a fluffy toy. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like a like a like one that you climb a wall with. You throw it, you know. But they have like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was throwing it at a manatee, and we pulled up, and our boat is marked government, like it has government symbols on the side, and we're like, hey, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I don't know. He was, uh, he was, he didn't speak much English, and he was telling us that he was trying to catch it to eat it. Because they eat manatees in this country, you know, mm. and we're like, well, I'm not here. That's an offense, whatever. <laughs> and then Ken and Joey goes, ah, okay. And then he just wandered off into that. But, uh, which, you know, I don't think he would have caught the manatee. If the grappling hook got into the manatee, it would have pulled him in the water. They're very strong. But, um, but, uh, you know, I don't know if I specifically helped a single manatee, but I felt like what I was doing as far as like we would do the surveys to count them. 
Um, I would respond to ones that were in distress. Sometimes they were trapped behind the economy salinity control. Uh, they're like uh, these barriers that they, that they put around construction sites and then they kind of hang down like a curtain underwater. And sometimes they would get stuck behind there. So, you know, I guess you could say some of those I helped get out, but I think they would have probably been okay. But I don't know the ones that were stuck in the, um, in the parking lot. I didn't make the call. Some lady saw them there, but you know, I helped the process to get them out of a parking lot and back into the ocean. So you could say those two, I guess, you know, you never pulled a plastic straw out of one of their noses. No, I never saw a plastic straw on a manatee's nose, but there was a lot of entanglement. Like they get entangled in like crab trap uh, ropes or monofilament and stuff like that. But so I guess there was a couple like that, but it wasn't me. Sp- it's always a team effort with a manatee. They're like thousands of pounds. You're not just waiting in there and like, okay. Doing a, you know. <laughs> Did a manatee ever remember you? I don't think so. No. Not the one no. you took the picture with? And there was one that was like, Ooh, first you do. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, uh, I don't know what their memories are like. I don't know what their memories are like. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hi, Forrest. I hope you find your dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, it's a, it's a lot more inappropriate now that I think about it. Um, can they communicate with each other and how? He says, yes, they yeah, sonar and winking gestures. Not sonar. That's dolphins. They communicate. They have vocalizations that have been recorded. And, um, and uh, that's a bit... That, very common with a, a mother and a calf, they'll communicate and they have vocalizations that you could probably identify as like, maybe that's that calf's quote unquote name, you know, that's like the, the sound that they're known by. Also pheromones in the water. When one, when a, when a, when a female is ready, like to be mated with, they release pheromones and that's why the herd of males know that and they go after them. That's a form of com- communication. And also not as common, but they will eat each other's poop sometimes. Like they'll Ooh. actually eat it, and that way they can tell like a lot of information. The same way a dog Scat would sniff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this is the part of the show where we talk about dinner party facts. So, oh, what's that? If you could give us oh. a fact that slavery, somebody could <laughs> somebody could <laughs> tell their friends at a bar or a party or to impress someone, uh, give us something good. I don't know. I think people might know this, but I'm not sure. Did, did you guys know that they were mistaken for mermaids? No. No. Okay, good. Dinner party fact. All right. So, um, the, 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 remember earlier I was saying dugongs and manatees are all in the Serenia, um, and that's sirens, like for sirens, which if you go back to like um, the, the sirens were the, the, the supposedly half – uh, human half fish creatures yeah. that lured the it, sailors it, it, into it, the sea. It, it, it's sirens with Al McPherson and Hugh Grant in it, and Al McPherson's topless in a few scenes. Yeah, so, so that's the only- so that's why they get that name. That's why that the Latin name for for the um it, where it comes from because they were they they believed that they were mistaken for mermaids. And Christopher Columbus specifically in his journal said that he saw these mermaids that he had had heard so much about. Off of the coast of Africa, which would be the West Coast, the West African manatees. And also when he got to the New World in the Caribbean and near Florida, that would be the, the West Indian manatee. And he said, I, here's the quote. What did he say? He goes, um, he goes, uh, he described them as not as beautiful as they are painted, since in some ways they have a face <laughs> like a man, is what he said. So, so that's the, at almost certainly what he thought he was seeing were these manatees. And that's like this, you know, it, it's been, it's, it's been proven that that's what he was talking about. So manatees, that's how bad it was on ships when you were going across the sea Damn. for months, drinking rum, whatever you showed them. You were like, yeah, I'd fuck that manatee. That's pretty odd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Manatees were mistaken for mermaids back in the Colum- days of Columbus. So that guy had his grappling hook. Yeah, Columbus wasn't a good person either. So <laughs> yeah. He's a fucking liar. So. <laughs> He's trying to eat mermaids. <laughs> They're very yeah, the, tasty. The grappling hook guys like this. In my culture, we f- eat Eats manatees. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah, exactly. Um, and I would just say, if you are interested in helping to protect manatees, go to savethemanatee.org, and there's a lot of good resources on there as far as stuff you can donate to or or help. And you can learn more about them on there, so you can see if I was wrong. I think I was pretty close on everything. Yeah, you're still going to get shit in the comments Yeah, I, so I forgot family <laughs> order, all that stuff at the beginning. I don't know. I don't do science anymore, but the rest of it, I, it seemed pretty right in my head. So, yeah. Sounds good to me, man. <laughs> yeah, you're only allowed to ca- a shit talk in the comments if you also have a picture at at the bottom of the water with a manatee. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll send those to, to yeah. Louise. I have pictures of me and manatees just to prove that was yeah. around manatees. All right, because I'm not in the room, Kelly, Jack, who wants to do the uh, out 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 statement? I think Jack would like to do it. Uh, yeah. Well, if you think. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> catching a uh, manatee with a grappling hook. No, 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 no. If you're ever at a bar. Oh, yeah. if you're ever at a bar and you think, hey, there's a manatee over there, I'm going to catch it with a grappling hook. I don't know about that. Wow. Not that's not how it's done. No. <laughs> that's not a... to you, I reckon I could capture that manatee with a grappling hook. Go, well, I don't know about that and walk away. And then you say goodbye to Australia. Yeah, try it again, Jack. Australia. Now, try it with a different one than the grappling hook. Oh, so, okay. If you're ever in a bar and someone says if to you. If you're ever in a bar and someone says to you, hey, does that look like a mermaid over there? And you go, no, it looks like a manatee. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of Australia. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs>